Welcome back. Here, you put that glass down nowhere, I'll put it down for you. I um, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming home from Yori books instead of bourbon books. But there's no doubt still would have passed that place where the victim was stabbed. What is stopping him from going right? Yes, thank you, Inspector. Um, allow me to reiterate for my learned, if some, somewhat slow Nipponese friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. As I suspected, you can't fool me and I don't suggest you try. What did I say, eh? I've had enough of this show. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? <laughs> I'm gonna guess this old man hasn't seen shit. Heard shit. We mustn't give up. What? What do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury may be able to decide that Mr. Natame is guilty. She's absolutely right. We must think. We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Soseki-san must have passed the location of the incident on his way home from Yori Books, but... The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself, counsel. Um, yes, my lord. You you can see what I mean on this map. When returning from Yori Books to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume could have followed this route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. That's what I was thinking. If the defendant used those three streets, look what happens. He arrives back in his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that. That road is which is commonly referred to as the long way round. On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, um... The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words, the accused took the uh, obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of the crime. But, ah yes, I've got it. Obviously you must ask the man himself, ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Huh. That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which road he took home. I don't. I don't believe this. I thank you, my learned friend. I I and suggest that we do not waste any more of this court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray what... Say you insightful jurors. But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... I agree with Lord Van Zeeks wholeheartedly in every way. What? I don't believe it. It does, does this mean we members of the jury are completely convinced now? Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty. 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 Fuck. <laughs> it 
It would appear the jury's le learning, leaning isn't unanimous. That's what I was thinking. To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Mr. Norohodo. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I have to tip the balance of the scales the other way. I have to turn us around. Somehow. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Cory, not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of defense written in antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with the summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whippersnapper and his Ancus refusal to throw in his alley. Very well, then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. For pity's sake, the little Nipponese oddity already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that the woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why couldn't it only have been the victim? The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back in the bookshelf. No. Okay, not in winter. So the poor woman is attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really didn't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I got work to be doing. Hmm, Yori books, yes. Nice shop at that. But bourbon books? Humph. No, not worth a visit. I think we need to press a little here. There's only minor exceptions. The reasonings of the finding of defendant guilty are all too clear. When the stabbing once occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I wouldn't have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of the Mr. Atomate's guilt now. Why did he have to run away like that? And how are you supposed to believe in some phantom attack that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Narahodo, this is no time to be for grumbling. We want to force the trial to continue. Yes, I know. I have to truth turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. Yeah, the floor council, begin your summation. Yes, my lord. I just need to keep this trial going somehow, whatever it takes. Come on, Oyonosuke, you can do it. Um, excuse me, but aren't you... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the side of it, anyways. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fox around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me and that young hatter pegged as criminals. Oh, well, you know. Water on the bridge. <laughs> now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around. And the police have been badgering me nonstop. If I could turn back the clock. Well, anyway, I don't know about the hatter. But at least I'm in the clear now. And free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Huh. Thank goodness. Alright. Maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. Hold it. You're right. At the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly it's funny. Little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. 
But let's not forget, madame, that the defendant vehemently, vehemently denies attacking the woman. Why, of course, he does. If he admits stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver faced coward, honestly. Claiming, claiming the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that's a lie, as you're suggesting, do you not think you would have concocted something more credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes through that funny little mind? I can tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. <laughs> God, I like this lady. I do declare the man he's already made the admission. He himself has stated there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could have possibly committed this awful crime. Ugh. If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well, for her. <laughs> the man wouldn't have gone around... Hold it! Not in winter. But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Nathame could have taken back from Yari books. Oh yes, like you drew on the map, you mean. What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? I feel like that clashes with something. Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. Huh. Why is it all this true? So really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone to Calabash Roadway, it might be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honestly, I would. Hmm, a reason why Saseki-san might have taken the longer way home. It's a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. Hold it! You. Whatever is the matter, young man. You're the wife of Mr. Garadab, are you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume's room. The master's wife. Where did you get the idea, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand. She's keeping up that charade. Ah, this is going to be awkward. Why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd be selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. I was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsume, the defendant takes a lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right, although he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes. He's just the sort. Wouldn't she know whether what road he goes down? What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache. The man never speaks, and don't get me started on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh dear, poor Natsume. How can people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm. Nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... Anyway, I better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She said enough damning things already. Hold it! A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line, too, and so is my family's. Ah. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I didn't work, I don't eat, and neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left and right and center. They're after cheap labor to get the rounds dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog from dawn to dusk, it is. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just around the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence. That's right. Mirsham Street it was. 
He was between it. Mayorship Street. On the map, Mr. Narahodo, there are only three named streets. Jury number five. I seem to need to add information to your formal statement, please. What's the point of that? Can we just get this business out with them? Please, sir. It's important. Tsk. Fine, I'll do it then. These two statements clearly add odds with one another. At odds, counsel. Explain to yourself. Please don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Eh, what? I just wanted to get this done and dusted. <laughs> well, juror number three. Oh, me, sir. What What do you mean? Juror number five's words now just extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of second-hand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Meersham Street. It's impassable. Which means the defendant's route home could not have taken him along Meersham Street and down Briar Road. Oh yes, of course. Wait, what do you think, sir? Well, yes, you can't argue with that, really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back home to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I suppose I must be right, eh? Juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But we see now that he had no choice. My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes. I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get back to the bottom of what really happened. Whee! What about you, sir? Eh, who, me? Huh, oh, wow. Alright then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in, that's what I say. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. That was wonderful. Well, we managed to change a couple of minds at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and we'll prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider that stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if the current leanings are really tight, right or not. Now, if only, if we could just identify one more clue discrepancy that would make him stop doubting Mr. Natsume. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. Real man, well, not leave a job half done. That's what we have to prevent. Whatever means we have at our disposal. Thank you, Counsel. On with the summation examination, please. Yes, my lord. Hold it! What do they mean, bourbon books? Hmm? Sorry? Fold it, you say? Fold what? <laughs> Um, no, 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 no. What I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit Yori books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day. Including the day you're all talking about. And at what time do you visit Yori books in the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon. It would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and donked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road. That's right. I live in Conpipe, you see.
Heading down Calabash Road is quite the quickest way for me to get back from Yori Books. Jury number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement, it may very well be extremely significant. Sorry? Extremely sick. <laughs> Not right now. He's okay, everybody. Don't worry. No old men were harmed in the making of this. Only the old man that slipped. <laughs> You've changed two of the jurors' minds, Narahoto. Yes, just two more to go. Deliver the finishing blow now. Time to turn the tables here. Wish I knew how to do a Sasada takedown. Those words will have to suffice for now. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two. Or juror number six. My, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. There is at least one fact in which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly incites Indicates that the day of the attack, he had been to Yori Books and purchased a number of second-hand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing some appear in front of him by, uh, on, on the way. Someone in the green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are well aware of this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection! Yeah, obviously. Just checking something real quick. Can you really be sure of that, madame? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number 60's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim. Who was wearing a green overcoat and fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my. My goodness, you, you mean. That's right. I'm referring to, of course... The hard of hearing, juror number six. Are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was a jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man had a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. My goodness me. Oh, sorry? You need to pee? <laughs> Crucially, we know precisely where the old man in green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means that the defendant must have taken the long road back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. You idiot old man, if you hadn't been so daft to be roaming about there, we would have boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you just say to me? Is it a crime for elderly to walk the streets these days? Is it a crime to slip over the ice? It is a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat. Hold it. What does she have? What does she have? My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning. I presume. I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to be changed your mind? Is it? Well, <laughs> this old guy? <laughs> there seems to be a pattern. On how the people are summoned there. It looks like they... Oh. Well, that summation examination is concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. Is the last... Is the second and... 
second juror always going to be a young woman, the third always going to be a young man, and the last one going to be an old person, and the second last going to be some worker. Eyes two, the nose four. So if the nose have it, guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. Trial will continue. Objection! Could it seem surely should me to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after raising an objection? Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Lord Van Zeeks. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. <laughs> Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Easterner entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed. Stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road as he claims. I believe as he said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you have ex excavated, sir. That's right. Took me the whole day and they paid me a me measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that the two yards represents? Um, well... If I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Yes. Less than two meters. That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Yeah, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the side of your works? Yeah, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway, and we just turn any gentlefolk back when they come. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in a meaning mandarin to the around town. Is that true? In ice? The incomfortable truth is that all the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt it was way back to his lodging. Mr. Notham may walk down Briar Road. Crushed in a single sentence. And old man. Cold man. You could talk. You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, um, can't say I remember. You don't remember? How about a wager? My learned friend. You say it was this old man that accused saw, but I wouldn't lay a thousand to one. Against you being able to prove it. Order, order. Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself. My lord. If you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience of no doubt he came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury so readily swayed. But my hospitality has its limits and they have been reached, I feel. Here we go. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What are you talking about? My lord? The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. It's next witnesses. Narahodo, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being Scotland Yard's policeman too, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Alright, no matter who Van Zeeks brings to the stand as its witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki-san. I know he's innocent, and I'll keep believing it to the very end. Until this battle is over. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Constable Rolly Beat, sir. Another report on the streets, sir. 
And I'm Miss Beat. Patrice is my name. I am proud to say this young town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? <laughs> well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no, it was your husband that I was asking about. He seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beach is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from the rare days off, our gallant officers in charge some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs and collect taxes, survey the straits, check the meters our reading are true. And I suppose they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting the extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on that last that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet. I'd have collapsed long ago. <laughs> nice. But it goes without saying the policeman's primary duty is apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. But the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Bry Road in the opposite direction, and they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, me and Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it, Rolly? Sir, Constable Rolly Beat, sa! Another report on the streets, sa! What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimony now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, the witness is saw. It was on our wedding anniversary and Rolly was ta t taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog in the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over a course in the vent for help at a nearby police box. It was definitely the Japanese man in the dock. Rolly and I both saw him clear as day. Well, this is extremely com compelling testimony, I must say. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. The testimony is true. The alternative course events as you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death knell, in fact. Because of the alternative, was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate be beckoning. Be chancing. And on your wedding anniversary, too. Oh, I know. But I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Ah, gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed. However, this cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What did you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without a doubt the accused, Soseki Natsume. And one of these witnesses is the policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Except that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Enough preamble. Counsel, for the defense, commence the cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. It was our wedding anniversary and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. What time? No time to change after work, you say? Are you also a member of the police, Miss Beetle? Neat. Oh, no, sadly, sadly not. It's a job for stretching men and young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Rolly looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you to the ground, doesn't it, darling? Huh? What? Ah, I just finished my beat. Pat and I were heading back to the station. I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh, no, really, I prefer you in your uniform. 
Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beef for the day, correct? That's right, Sa. Yes, although I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But policing is my life, Sa. As long as I'm the proud owner of this, I serve my city and my queen to the end. What's that now? My want caught, Sa. Proof that I'm a London copper. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it. And it's a reminder of us, the policemen, of our sworn duty. Patrol the streets of London, town, and uphold the peace of the common man. Sa, and for such a noble cause, I cover 20 miles every single day without fail and without a grumble. Because I know that the putting of my boots is all London has need to hear the safe and secure. So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it, then. But Sa, just on that particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Miss Beats put up with a lot being married to a bobby like me. And I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Aw, that's cute. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. <laughs> oh, what a charming couple. Their love is such a young joy to behold. If a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kindly describe what happened next. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog in the pavement in front of us. Two silhouettes. That's right, they were coming towards us, walking up Bry Road in the opposite direction. There was a rather plump figure, followed by a scrawny, thin-looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim it's pictured in this print. Unlike Mr. Natsume. Yes, unfortunately it does. And you're certain all that time there was nobody else nearby. Oh yeah, it's quite certain it was dark, but there are streetlights on Briar Road, you see. There was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Huh? What? Ah, yes, that's right. Of course. There was a light fog on the ground. But Briar Road is dead straight ahead, and you can see a fairly long way down the pavement. And there was a street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. <laughs> Before sleeping takes the fur and pole, do you answer please, Mr. Beat? Are you quite sure of what you've just said? Yes, sir. Uh, as a copper who spends all the day, every day, keeping watch on the streets, I swear to it, sir. Uh. Oh, they're so adorable. I like her ribbon. I'm sure as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. But still I'm maintaining there was no one else around the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must now be really happened. I beg... I, it's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, then one other sc scattered something before running off. Hold it! Hmm, scattered something. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Oh, what? Ah, yes, that's right. It was some old books. I see. Old books. Yes, sir, the cupboard had dropped a number of them. Around where the victim lay in the pavement. Indeed. As clearly pictured in this photographic print. The wrong Japanese man did what he did. Uh, did that when he did the Hold deed. It. Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. It was the man in the dock without question. Sa. The mustache. The hunched back. The cat-like eyes. The taut mouth. The snub nose. Every snub nose. Oh, very snub nose. Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right, he looked down at the poor defenseless woman with those terrifying intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his books onto the pavement and ran away. I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that this unambiguous testimony came from the policeman and his wife. Now please continue. 
Isso! <laughs> we ran straight over course and went for help at a nearby police box. You are the police, though. Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am the proud wife of one after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Huh? What? Ah, yes, that's right. I asked Miss Beat to go. It was off-duty at that point, but a Bobby's never truly off-duty, of course. So I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Um, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on the crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where this woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way the police box for the beat and the incident fell under so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There was nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh, please, you're making us blush. Isn't he, darling? Yes, sir, what Patricia said. Let's move on, shall we? It was definitely that Japanese man in the cloak. Rolly and I both saw him clear as day. Hold it! But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas stream lamps, would you? We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Right. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. And my husband already told you that the fog was only, was only light, didn't he? Ah, yes. And what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is. It is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own arm. Yes, all right, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain that it was a little Japanese man we saw. Little? Can't we, darling? Oh, uh, what? Ah, yes. It was the accused and no mistake. The mustache, the hunched back, the cat-like eyes, the taut mouth, and the snub nose. Unmistakable, sa. As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Shiseki San they saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it, is it? That's the entire testimony. What do you think, Mr. Nadohodo? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Miss Beats saw what they saw. They're not the way running away from the scene of the Bri Road on that day. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The members of the jury are sure to call it for guilty verdict after the testimony. Oh no, then what do we do? If Kazuma Sama were here, what are you trying to say? I think he would try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean, somewhere else? Their statement about seeing Mr. Natsume is unequivocal. Calling out in the question won't help. But if you could identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them to make the jury doubt if their parents' memory that day is accurate. All right. Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in this statement somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. Oh, why do I always seem to be so up against it? Uh, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh, yes, of course. What is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we've told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony, is that right? Well, out with it! What? No, 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 it's really not that at all. My husband's a policeman, remember, and I know what I saw. I remember every last detail, everything, like, like... Oh, I know! What about the books the man dropped? I can tell you the names of every single one I could, every single one. Please do so! And you dare question how reliable my testimony is? That will do, Mr. Beat. No, it won't do at all. <laughs> that Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a moment that Rolly will. 
I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fist down. Perhaps Chancey would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Miss Beat. Might that appease you? <laughs> oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? <laughs> Lady, you just should have shut up. I can't even tell you the names of the four books dropped at the scene. Mm. What four books? Objection. We already have a problem with the number of books here. So, you're saying that there were four books. That's right, I remember all of them. The picture of the Monsi of somebody, what's it, yearning, the meal for someone, and the thing of Misabi something. I'm sorry, Miss Beat. But there's a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no, what? what's the flaw? Simply that, at the scene of the crime, there were only three books, not four. What? This is the receipt from the bookshop where the defendant brought his books. Yore books. Yes, and it details Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. Only three? But no, no, that can't be. I remember seeing them. There were four books, I tell you. Four dirty old books. Oh, really? Have a good look at this photographic print at the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see from the evidence as well, there are only three books. But I just don't believe it. I saw them there, I swear on I saw them. No, madame, I'm afraid your powers of observation cannot be relied upon. Grr. So it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you could very well be mistaken. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh yeah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Objection! It's plainly evident that it is your power to deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nibunese friend. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene. A fact that you know very well you could have no hope of disproving. Ah. So you've striven to avert attention from that by a dint of some inconsequential discrepancies. Wouldn't that be fair? Ah, he sees right through me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with the toast. To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony in every respect. Hmm? You see, the matter is not up for debate. As it's seen on Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. But, what about the photographic print? It only shows three books. Quite right. Only three can be seen. In that print. That print, you mean to say. Holy fuck, sir. Stop throwing that shit. Allow me to present another one that shows the victim's hand. It's the maid, bitch. <laughs> Why does he have the lion's pride? But he still never bought it. Oh my god, she was eating the book. Yes, clearly. Uh, <laughs> On her way home, the victim was eating her book. Upon pure disgust, a random Japanese man just stabbed her in the back to get the book back. I don't believe it. It's the 14th book. 14th. Fourth book. <laughs> I can read, fellas. <laughs> As you will observe. <laughs> the fourth book was hidden from view in the original print by the victim's torso. No. But there's still only three on the thing. 
Order, order. You see, you see, look at that, look, 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 look. Yes. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Yes, sir. Patricia's always right, sir. Let us study the receipt for the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Miss Beat, the titles once again, if you please. Oh, yes, of course. Picture of the Monsieur somebody or another. The picture of the Monsieur Le Croc. What is it's yearning. <laughs> Canterbury yearnings. A meal for someone. A meal for a Gabro, in fact. And the court has just heard the witnesses remembers the book titles flawlessly, save for a few minor details. Miss Beat's powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. <laughs> Do you hear that, Rolly? The gentleman paid me a compliment. Yes, sir, a flawless, sir. Patricia is flawless. But there are only three books on the receipt, and Miss Beat mentioned four. There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly the fourth book is that which is shown in this photographic print. I'm sorry, counsel, but does that not seem odd? Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipt? It's not odd at all, my lord. As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, it belongs to the victim. The victim was holding her own book. I wonder, what became of that fourth book? Obviously it wasn't overlooked by investigating officers at Scotland Yard. I have it here as evidence. You will submit that in the aforementioned photographic print to the court counsel. My pleasure, my lord. The second crime scene photograph has been entered into the court record. The fourth book has been entered into the court record. We got an S. Prosecution rest. You're not resting. Man, that's a lovely burned book. Oh, look at this. The book has been badly burned. You're right, you'd never be able to read it in this state. Especially not the latter, latter pages. What a terrible waste. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm, a book. Recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? We can't open the book. I can read the title though. Let me see, it's the book entitled The Lion's Pride. I'm afraid I don't know the English literature at all. So it wouldn't be something I've heard. Wait a minute. The Lion's Pride. That's strange. I think I've heard a book by that name before, and very recently too. It's a title I recognize too, not a hotel. I have nothing further to add. What? You seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The sp spurious long longer route of the cursed lodgings that you tried to establish in your summation examination, and the attempted discrediting of the witness's powers of recollection in your cross-examination. Futile. I walked right into this, didn't I? You see, everything we said is true. Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat. Marry me, Pat. <laughs> so, perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions. Should the chorus wait any time more than these nippity, nippity travesty? Or is it the decision you have to make all too apparent already? You have heard all of the witnesses and seen all of the evidence. The trial has run its course. Mr. Narahoto, I'm afraid we are in a terribly precarious position. I know, but... If I fight back in the wrong way now, I could very well just make matters worse. Think, Renosuke, think. What do you want to do now? I would like to raise an objection on how that book is burned. I'm not done yet. No, my learned friend, it's over. The last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense, and you failed. The, the die has been cast. There is no room, more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... Ah, I can't think of what to say. 
If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. It seems somewhat boorish to close down a debate at this point. Huh. Your insignificant little eastern isle must be a lawless hole indeed. For a lowly judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Ooh. Ouch. I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So you will have to forgive me. But I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. That's not a hodo. Hmm. One of this land's great guiding principles is tolerance. So, the court will hear you, madame. Go ahead, Miss Asado. Please. Very well. Pray, what insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? Well, the court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination finished. I see. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? Uh, Mr. Narahodo, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask the numbers of the jury to announce their leanings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is and why. So we must take this opportunity to examine the newly presented evidence as thoroughly as possible. Yes, I understand. And thank you, Mr. Sato. This is it. So Sarathana has managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. The defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a profound insight into the case and has hithered and to be overlooked. And every time I can't believe how badly burnt it is. The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print of the crime scene. The fourth book, found in the victim's hand. Objection. We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Other than it being the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further would be a flagrant waste of the court's time as well as you know. Hmm. Yes. I'm afraid, counsel, I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you this opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contained a hitherto clue. So I must insist that you elaborate, counsel. You will identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes, my lord. It is, um, Mr. Narahodo, I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of this evidence, which means you may very well be on the right track. Ah, uh, yes, I think you might be right. So, counsel... Precisely where is the vital clue to this case, which this fourth book conceals? Got it! Got it! I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. The back? What do you... Good gracious. It's been burnt to a crisp. So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. Objection. Unnaturally, say, and what of it, my Nipponese friend? Oh. Were I to concede to the point, if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. So should you wish to assert that this fire damages some vital clue to what happened on that day? Pray do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? Another emergency save. 